Welcome, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me. This is Chef SK. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. We have a very exciting day for you. Have some friends stopping by, have some food, have some drinks. We have a little bit of a chamomile spritz, which is gonna be like a nice smooth ginger ale to start you off, a nice arugula salad. And then for our main, some curried white beans, roasted carrots, and my mustard thyme lamb chops. So let's get to it. All right, let's start with some beverage. So today I have something called a chamomile spritz for you. We're gonna have some dried chamomile flowers. We're gonna steep down some fresh ginger as a tea, a little bit of wildflower honey, and then we're also going to be cutting up some fresh ginger and straining it in to really give you a zing at the end. All right, so I got a French press here, but I'm not making a cup of joe. I'm a tea guy, so I use all my uh, loose leaf tea. I got my water boiling in the back here. So you're just going to, going to put down your chamomile flowers. And this here is going to be more of a concentrate. So you wouldn't want to drink something like this straight. This is going to be way too much. That's why we're going to be cutting it with the ice and the club soda at the end there. So to steep down, we're going to take about two knots of ginger. So two finger lengths of the ginger, just rough chopped on this. This brings out the warmth of the ginger, where when you put it in the blender raw and strain it in, that's what gives you the zip at the end. So go back to your boiling water here. And this here only has to steep about five, seven minutes or so. And then we're gonna put it back in the same pan over the wildflower honey to steep that down there. Give this a stir. We'll get the rest of our ginger chopped up. This is gonna go into a blender with just a little bit of regular water here, and then we will be straining it through um, my strainer. So here I have my fresh ginger, just gonna add it to your small blender. Ginger's already washed. Just about a half cup of water here. going to blend that ginger uh, into a pulp and then we are going to strain it into our uh, finished mixture at the end there. All right, so we have our chamomile and ginger steeping on this side. All right, I'm just going to get this ginger cleaned up here, almost done with our tea and we're going to move on to the lamb. All right, now for the star of the show. I mean, I, I know I'm here, but we have our mustard thyme lamb chops, and these are pretty straightforward. We'll be using a little bit of fresh thyme here. A rub that I had put together previously shows a lot about me, um, something I've used for years and years. We got so many things in there, some brown sugar, three kinds of paprika, a little bit of coffee, cumin, oregano, all sorts. So we then always salt and pepper and a little bit of fresh Dijon. This uh, white vinegar is gonna cut the acidity of the lamb just enough um, to play on top of that at the fresh thyme. So let's get going. Olive oil first. When we cook these, we're gonna be really monitoring the moisture and uh, keep covering them on and off, really to keep a little bit of that au jus at the end that I'll show you how we, how we dress the pan there. All right, so get your liquid down first. It's really just a tiny bit of this vinegar here. And this is a rice vinegar, so super, super on the mild side. Put down a little bit of our Dijon. Get all your wet ingredients on first. We put our salt and pepper on second. Rub these up. So this lamb here, you'll see at the end, has a little pesto that goes on top, and that's a couple fun little tricks we'll pull out in a, in a little bit there. We'll go with our fresh thyme. 
And seasoning throughout the dish is something you'll see with me as well. Meats and vegetables really accept flavor at different times. So you'll see me dash a little of this, sprinkle a little of that all throughout. So a little history about myself. I've uh, been through a lot of different industries, honestly, but um, when I moved to New York City, I fell in love with food. So living in Queens, traveling high and far, borough to borough, really just, uh, I guess, getting my chops as you would, you know? So work your way into restaurants, change careers, open a barbecue spot, and um, never try to be from one place, one region. I always do say, really only one spice away and I think the, the world would be a better place if that was the uh, if that was the case so my style has a lot of it's coming out of left field sometimes but um, at the end I'm sure everyone will enjoy I'm gonna put get our salt in there back with our rub little brown sugar helps these at the end when we go for a sear all right so we have about about 15, 20 minutes with this, but this dish here, it works out really well. You'll see with the, uh, the white beans down the way and the smoky carrots, everything kind of does its thing, sits on warm, and then all comes together at the end. All right, I'm just gonna get my hands rinsed and then we're gonna finish up our um, chamomile spritz right there. All right, so uh, we're ready to get back to our tea here. You have your dried chamomile flowers and your fresh ginger, and we're gonna be straining that right over a little bit of wildflower honey. Just about, about two, three tablespoons of the wildflower honey. We're gonna put a little bit in the bottom of the glasses when we do serve this in a bit. All right, now this is our finished concentrate here. We're just gonna give this a little bit of a stir. And then what we're gonna do is strain our fresh ginger from our small blender right back into this liquid here. You know what, since this liquid is actually a little bit warm, we are gonna wait. So let's just put this into, let's strain this into a Pyrex for now. I'll tell you, little strainers like this, nut milk bags, make you look like something in the kitchen, let me tell you. <laughs> Now this stuff is potent. This is what keeps uh, this is what keeps the doctor away right here. All right, so I'm gonna get cleaned up here. We're gonna let the concentrates just kind of chill out a little bit, cool off, and in a little bit when we're ready to serve the salad, it's gonna be over a little bit of ice, some candy ginger, and a little bit of club soda. So that will be served in a little bit with first course. All right, course number one, everybody. We have the green and toasty arugula salad, and that's because there are a bunch of green things in there. We got some hidden scallions, add a little pungent for you. Nice tartness of a green apple, uh, green bell pepper, obviously our arugula there. And then what we have something special is toasted sunflower seeds inside of the dressing. Those will also be in the carrot pesto that we're gonna be showing you later. All right, so let's get these scallions chopped up first. Everything right into the bowl. We'll be dressing this a little bit later on when we're ready to serve right before main course. This will come out with your chamomile spritz there. And the tartness of this green apple here just plays so well with the nuttiness of those sunflower seeds. Okay, apples are in. Clean the seeds out of our green pepper here. We won't be putting the cheese in at the moment, but a nice salty ricotta salada just brings this all together at the end, right before we serve. All right, all of our vegetables are chopped and we're gonna get right into our dressing here. So grab your small blender. It's gonna be about two to one with the olive oil um, to a little bit of white wine vinegar. We're gonna go two cloves of garlic on this. Fresh garlic. Got you a little bit of Dijon in there, just a tiny bit. 
Your nutritional yeast here adds that little bit of a, a cheesy flair to it. I use this to top a lot of my salads. This is also obviously main ingredient in uh, vegan cheeses. Gives it that little, uh, that little funk. All right, good amount of salt and pepper. Always using Celtic sea salt, my absolute favorite. It keeps all, has all the minerals in there, but also really brings out the flavor of everything you're working on. All right, so the secret in here, we got the sunflower seeds as we get a little while. All right, so we're gonna taste this one here, see if we need to add a little something. All right, so we're just gonna go a little bit more oil, a little bit on the tangy side, a little bit more nutritional yeast, and then a tiny bit of um, black pepper. Exactly where we want it. We want to keep some of our sunflower seeds off to the side for the carrot pesto that we'll be doing. Also to garnish the salad at the very end there. All right, I'm just gonna transfer my dressing into a Pyrex here and we'll save it for later. All right, so I'm gonna get everything from the salad cleaned up here and then we are gonna be moving on to our smoky sesame carrots and our carrot pesto. All right, now we're gonna get started on our smoked sesame carrots, along with our special carrot green pesto. So, we got some wild ones, big old carrot greens over here. And let's separate these ones first. These, these will go right into our food processor in a minute. Okay, and with the carrots, you're gonna to wanna to go um, right down the middle with these and then in half one more time. These will probably take the longest. We want a really nice, um, really nice char on the outside and then a nice uh, soft center. So we're gonna be rolling these in a little bit of uh, sesame oil, but no seasoning till about middle to end. I don't want it, I don't want that uh, all to just um, burn off. All right, so I'm gonna chop the rest of these carrot greens here. I'm gonna throw them right in the uh, food processor. We'll put uh, all the other ingredients in just a minute. All right, so once again, like I said, half with these, in half one more time. High heat in the pan. So these, we're gonna kinda monitor the moisture um, and the texture throughout. Uh, after this, we'll go into white beans, have some salad, let things hang a little bit, and then we'll throw that lamb down. We're not even gonna season these yet, not even any salt actually. You don't wanna draw out any of the moisture out of the carrots. You wanna get a nice brown on these and then we'll bring out all the flavor uh, in a little bit. So let's go a little bit of sesame oil. Just gonna roll them on up, get them into your hot pan. Since the temperature is very high, we're gonna use the top to kind of keep on and off and uh, get them just how we like. All right, now moving on to the carrot green pesto. We're gonna chop, a, rough chop a little bit of mint and basil here. I didn't wanna go straight forward and have that basil take over, that's why I went in with a little bit of mint. Let's go just about about a quarter cup or so of the uh, ricotta salada. All right, so we have our carrots in here, a little bit of sesame oil. We are starting to get a nice brown on these. As soon as we get a little brown on these, we'll add a little bit of salt, a little bit of our seasoning, which in this case is going to be the smokiness from the smoked paprika. We're gonna have oregano powder, a little bit of cumin in here, and onion and garlic powder. 
or what? We're just about getting a little brown on these here. But I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper down. Put our spice rub that I had just talked about before. And what would smoked sesame carrots be without black sesame seeds? All right, let's roll these and we're gonna lower our heat. Let these hang out a bit and move on to its little accompaniment. We already have our ricotta salada in here. We have our carrot greens, little bit of mint, little bit of basil, and now goes in with our toasted sunflower seeds. Probably about a half cup on that. Gonna also probably go about a quarter cup or so of olive oil. Gonna pulse for about three, four seconds on and off, scrape the sides about two or three times throughout. Texture's looking good. Probably a little bit more olive oil as we go. Let's get a little salt and pepper in there. olive oil. See how these carrots are doing. Scrumptious. <laughs> Everything that we have in here, ricotta salada, sunflower seeds. Pulse, pulse, pulse. All right, that was just a little bit more olive oil and our texture is looking great. We're gonna give it a little taste and then we'll plate it and uh, save it for later. Mm. Sharpness from those carrot greens backed up a little with that mint and basil. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of ricotta salada, but we're there, people. Okay, now the same way that this pesto will be finishing these carrots here, it's also gonna be sprinkled on top of the lamb and sprinkled throughout the, the plate to add a nice freshness to every bite. All right, so for a little layer of flavor underneath those carrots, we have for you a curry Dijon aioli, and it's actually, I kept it vegan. It gets thickened through uh, a little bit of cashews that I had soaked overnight. We have a little bit of a warmer curry. This one will have your cinnamon and your fenugreek, uh, whereas the beans will just be curried down with a little bit of coriander, cumin, and turmeric. So, let's get your little blender out here. Once again, it's gonna be olive oil. Gonna grab a little bit of our rice vinegar from this side here. About three to one on this. We don't want it too tangy. Let's go handful of cashews. If you don't soak these, you just have to blend it a lot longer, but it comes out nice and creamy when you do. Always salt and pepper. Tons of curry powder. All right, let's get this blended up. We'll see how our texture's doing on here. Give it a taste. Looking pretty good. In the meantime, we still have our carrots on low on top of the stove. We have a hot pan for the onions and the garlic that we're gonna be chopped to do the curried white beans. A little bit of pepper and a little bit of Dijon. All right, we're gonna blend that back up, put that off to the side. That's gonna be a nice little backdrop for our uh, smoky sesame carrots here. All right, with our aioli set now, let's get into chopping our onions um, for our curried white beans. This here I'm using a uh, sweet onion. Onions, I was talking before, you don't know if they're good until you get them home. If you leave them home for one day, they might be the worst. But 
I love all kinds of onions. I got the scallions in the salad there and a little bit of sweetness for this curry. So we're gonna get a nice char on these onions once we put them down. It's a quick curry, super nice for this time of the year. We'll put a little bit of olive oil on these ones and then get them in that hot pan. All right, roll these up. Um, same with the carrots, no salt and pepper right off the bat. You add that in a little bit to dry out some of the moisture. So nice hot pan, nice sear on these. We're gonna lower the heat. We're gonna add our garlic and go from there. Let me get all these onions cleaned up and we'll be adding our coconut milk and our uh, beans in just a bit. All right, everyone, we have our onions browning on the stove top. We have our carrots staying warm inside the oven here, but it's time to get you some drinks. I'm lucky to have some of my people here. We have Allie, Shelby, and Carolyn. I don't know how I got such beautiful ones to taste my food, but they're gonna let me know how I did. So, let's get you going. This is our chamomile and ginger concentrate that we're gonna be putting over ice here. So we're gonna throw a little bit of honey down on each of these ice cubes here. Then we're gonna go over with our ginger candies. Go to about three to one with the chamomile concentrate, and then we're gonna to top it off with a little bit of uh, club soda for a little bit of bubble. I was saying this one I usually do with um, dried elderflower, because we know St. Germain makes everything all, all better. <laughs> All right, so we have our honey down in here. We're gonna to top with a little bit of ginger candies on each one of these. No bubble tea, just maybe something to chew on. We have our concentrate here. We're gonna go about three to one over ice. Little ginger residue, that'll get you. Nice and smooth with the chamomile, but you get a real nice ginger ale zip once you add that fresh ginger ale. So here you all are. I mean, put the kids to bed, it's the chamomile spritz. <laughs> yeah. So people like us. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Not bad at all. Yeah. I love the ginger aftertaste. Really cool. All right, now I'm gonna get some salad plated for everyone. Once again, this is our green and toasty arugula salad. We have our tart Granny Smith apples in here, a little hidden scallion, and then a little uh, green bell pepper. We have our dressing from before, which is a little toasted sunflower seed. It's pretty straightforward with olive oil, little nutritional yeast, white vinegar, salt, pepper. We're gonna dress this, add a little ricotta salada, some salt and pepper, and we'll get to it. All right, so we have all the salads plated here. We put a little bit of the ricotta salada on the top, more of those toasted sunflower seeds, and just a tiny bit more of the drizzle of the dressing, so. For you. <laughs> yeah, there you are, yeah. So while everybody's tasting what we got going on here, we're gonna be finishing up our curried white beans, getting everything to temperature, throwing our lamb down, and finishing up. So we have our cleaned, drained white beans here. Hold on, what do we think? Wow. How we do? Yeah, so dressing is on point, yeah? So yeah, 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 super cool. Amazing. Yeah, and that little hidden scallion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, it gets stuck in your tooth, right? Hey guys, so we have our onions a little brown on the onion over here. We're gonna put our garlic down and sweat that a bit. And then we add our coconut milk. Coconut milk goes about two minutes, dash of Worcestershire, and uh, a little spice rub in there. God bless frozen garlic. You guys use frozen garlic at the house? No? And 
And I say this one here is a little bit curry-ish. It doesn't have all the warm spices like the aioli that I had done, but this one really concentrates on coriander, cumin, and uh, turmeric. So no uh, cinnamon, fenugreek, anything like that on this one. So we're putting a little uh, pesto to finish these carrots here. A little bit of pesto down. Tiny bit more sesame oil here. A little bit more seasoning. So we have our coconut milk uh, coagulating just right on top of the stove there. We're gonna grab our coriander, uh, turmeric, and cumin and spice things up. Always a little more salt and pepper. Gonna use that Worcestershire sauce, and why I'm using Worcestershire sauce in with the coconut milk kind of reminds me of a Penang curry if you were to add a fish sauce into a coconut milk and with some of the nuts. So yeah, curry's good the next day, you know, and you can change them day to day, honestly. It's just what you just what you put in there. So this is coming up pretty fast, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit more coconut milk. All right, and then the beans go down on this, and like I said before, it's all a texture thing, so as many as you want to smash is good. Probably about two cups of beans. All right, so we have our curried white beans um, almost finished on top of the stove here, and it's ready to put down our lamb. Some of my favorite cuts of lamb, this is a loin lamb chop, so good amount of meat, those little triangles ones that you see in a store. So we have our lamb down, two nice uh, little chops for everybody, and we're gonna finish with our pesto and get to tasting. You want a little bit right on the top of your lamb right here. The freshness and the tanginess of this aioli works really, really nice. A Little bit of salt and pepper on each of these here. And it's time to chop these up. There you are. Once again, thank you guys for being with me. I appreciate you, and I hope you enjoy. Pesto has so much flavor. It's amazing. Yeah. Delicious. Into it. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Well, that looks like a wrap, everyone. Looks like everybody had a good time. I know I had a good time. Hope some of you adapt these recipes. Remember, we're only one spice away. Hope everybody stays blessed, and I'll see you all soon.